blessed day everyone today we will be discussing the southeast asian arts fabric and fabric design fabric design of the following countries thailand cambodia laos vietnam indonesia malaysia singapore and brunei unahin natin ang bansang thailand Thailand is famous for fabrics, especially its silk produced from the cocoons of Thai silk warm to the loom. The patterns in the silk were inspired by things in the natural world surrounding the weavers, such as the head of rice, snakes, flowers, birds, and leaves. Though, today, many weavers are updating this traditional process with modern with more modern designs kasi po nasa ano na rin naman tayo ngayon modern generation usually naman po talaga hindi nasikat yung mga dati nilang nakagawian ng mga style or design so ang na, ang ginawa ng mga Thailand weavers ina-upgrade na rin po nila yung mga design nila para po maka-adapt sa mga modern generations they have two examples of traditional Thai fabric patterns First ay ang mat min. Patterned silk is made from a specific kind of dyeing process. It is most commonly seen in the weaving of Isaan or northern, northeastern Thailand. Ito po yung design niya. Next naman, ng ikalawa ang, ay ang yok dork. It is another kind of pattern that is woven in Thai silk. It is called yok dork. It is a kind of brocade and often feature an all-over pattern of flowers. Tapos na tayo kay Thailand. Pag-usap naman natin si Cambodia. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga fabric design niya? Cambodia, silk weaving has been part of Cambodia culture for centuries since textile were used for trading. Modern textiles have traces of motifs, motifs imitating clothing details on ancient stone sculptures. Ito po yung example niya. Usually, ini-imitate lang nila or ginagaya lang nila sa mga ancient stone sculptures. Cambodia has two main types of Cambodian weaving. First is the ikat technique. Next is the uneven quilt. Pag-usapan natin, ano nga ba yung ikat technique? Ikat technique, Khmer term chunkyet, to create patterns, weavers tie, and portions of web, weft, yan, yarn before weaving begins. Patterns are diverse and vary by region. Common motifs include lattice, stars, and spots. Kung mapapansin nyo po, yan po yung mga common design nila. Ito pong nasa tela. Second naman, ay ang uneven twill. It yields single or two color fabrics which are produced by three so that the color of one thread dominates on one side of the fabric while the two other other thread determine the color on the reverse side. Ito po yung sa telang baliktara na pwede mo rin magamit yung kabilang side. Ibang color naman po yung lalabas. Yung mga kulay po nila, galing yan sa natural dyes. Ang red dye nila, galing sa insect nest. Ang indigo, blue dye. Ang yellow and green dye nila, galing sa fruit bark. Ang black dye nila, galing sa ebony bark. Ito po ang insect nest. Ito naman ang indigo. Ito naman ang prohut bark. Ito naman po ang ebony bark. Kung saan nagmumula ang kulay na itim. Cambodia, rural women often weave homemade cotton fabric which is used in garments and for household purposes. Kung mapapansin nyo po ito, ito po yung madalas na ginagamit ng ating mga kapatid na Muslim. Krama, the traditional check scarves worn almost universally by Cambodian 
are made of cotton. Usually, hindi lamang mga kapatid nating muslim ang gumagamit nito. Marami na rin mga ibang tao ang gumagamit nitong tela na ito. Punta naman tayo kay Lao. Tapos na tayo kay Cambodia, kay Thailand, tapos tayo kay Lao. Laos, famous for its hand-grown, hand-dyed, hand-woven cotton and silk fabric made by Lao village women. Silk and cotton making process dyeing and weaving near Yergen. Silk and cotton weaving by hand is an age art in the Laos, strand by strand. Iniisa-isa po nila ito, hinahabi nila gamit ang kanilang mga kamay. Wala po silang machine na ginagamit. Sin, the Lao women's ankle long skirt whose form is undeniable but whose patterns are unique to this skirt. Ito po, usually po ang mga ginagamit po nilang design dito ay mga stars, butterfly, or dots. Yun po yung mga ginagamit nilang design. Ito din po, kailangan po kung sino this often accomplished by symbolic totems from the inanimate or animate world crabs for resourcefulness, snakes for fertility, butterflies for beauty, birds for success, and so on. Yun yung usually yung mga design ng kanilang tela. Seen with their throughout her lifetime, usually po buong buhay nila, ang bayan doon, yun yung ginagamit nila. Ito pong Punta naman tayo kay Vietnam. Pag-usapan naman ng pagkay niya kasi ang ganda talaga ng tela ng ginagamit nila or ng yarn na ginagamit ng tela na ito. Mamahalin po yun. Vietnam. Golden thread silks were born in Vietnam. Many Vietnamese fabrics are unique from Hadong, the center of weaving, and Kerikus Kerk, silk form production for centuries. Gold thread silk yung ginagamit nila dyan. It's the old jacquard, jacquard loom. Up to now, up to now, ginagamit pa rin po nila itong loom na to. Sa paghahari. Popular Vietnamese fabric, the Shang Tung Caseta, Usually, ginagamit nila ito sa mga bridal gown, the Bengalin weave. Ayan, marami yan. Makikita natin sa Victoria, sa mga bilihan ng tela, marami yan. Medyo price na rin siya, medyo mahal na rin. Ito naman ang ebony weave. An all-natural weave that hand-woven in southern Vietnam and naturally dyed using ebony silk. tatlong bansa ang Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Batik, yun yung ginagamit nila. The fabric most common to both countries in the batik is the batik. The term batik is an Indonesian Malay word word sorry, believed to be related to the Malay word titik which means point, dot, or drop. The drop action refer, refers to the process of dyeing the fabric by making use of a resist technique. Ano nga ba yun? Ganito lang yun. Covering areas of cloth with a dye-resistant substance, usually hot wax to prevent them from absorbing colors. Natural materials such as cotton or silk are used for the cloth so that it can absorb the wax that is applied in the dye-resistant process. The cloth that is used for batik is washed and boiled in water. Hinuhugasan na po nila ito at pinapakuluan para po matanggal na yung iba't ibang mga chemical na nakadikit doon. Like traces of starch, lime chalk, and other sizing materials are removed. Kaya po, nililinisan nila to, nilalabhan nila to, at pinapakuluan muna yung tela. They have two categories of batik design. Ano-ano nga po ba yun? The 
the freeform design and the geometric design. Pag sinabi natin freeform, kahit ano, pwede nilang i-drawing. Pag sinabi, pwede yung mga flowers, plants, animals, kung ano man yung nasa surroundings nila. Pag sinabi natin geometric motifs, more on shapes po yan. Modern batik designs depend on the creativity of their designers. Naturalistic motifs like leaves, flowers, and birds have been utilized to create elaborate and intricate design. Modern designs also include more colors courtesy of chemical dyes. Pinahaluan na lang po ito ng chemical para po makaproduce na rin sila ng iba't ibang mga kulay. As artists are not bounded by the strict guidelines of traditional practices when craftsmen were dependent on natural dyes. Malaysia, the states of Kelantan and Terengganu are considered the cradle where batik first flourished, reaching even Singapore shore. They have two main types of batik, the hand-painted and the black-painted. Ito nga ba pag sinabi natin hand-painted? The artist uses the canteen, a small copper container with one or more different types of pipes. Hindi po yung basta paintbrush yung gagamitin nila sa pagpipinta. Meron po talaga silang ginagamit na canteen or yun yung ginagamit nila sa pagpipinta. Doon na po nakalagay yung kanilang pintura. Meron din po itong iba't ibang type. Next naman, yung black printed. Done by welding together strips of metal to form a metal lock. Gumagawa na po sila ng formahan ng design. Tapos po, nilulublub nila ito sa paint or sa pintura at saka nila itatatak, parang stamp, itatatak sa tela. The metal block is then dip into molten wax and press against the fabric in order to make a pattern. Yun po yun. Malaysia. Leaves and flowers in Malaysian batik are incorporated to avoid the interpretation of human and animal images as idolatry in accordance with local Islamic doctrine. This makes their batik look similar to that of Indonesia. However, the Malaysian batik is famous for its geometrical designs or spirals. The method of Malaysian batik making is also different from those of Indonesian Javanese batik. Their patterns are larger and simpler na unlike sa Japanese batik na medyo difficult yung mga design niya. More brush painting is applied to be able to put lighter and more vibrant colors than deep colored Javanese batik. Punta naman tayo sa Singapore. Nowadays, batik is featured in as the uniform of flight attendants for the official flag carrier airlines of Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Ito po, usually po ang sumusuot talaga sa kanila ng mga batik design ay ang kanilang mga flight attendant. Ay, nandito na tayo sa last na bansa, ang Brunei. Pag-usapan naman natin ang Brunei. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga fabric design nila? At yung mga types and style nila sa, or technique nila sa paggawa ng tela. Brunei Traditional textile is also called batik but it is uniquely different from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Its design have their national flower, the simpur, sumboy-sumboy, yung picture plant nila, the Brunei's traditional design of air murray. They have different techniques are used in Brunei's, or sorry, Brunei batik like the following, airbrushing, cracking, bubble, rainbow, sprinkle, geometry, and marble. These techniques are applied on the fabrics like cotton, chiffon, linen, and brocade. Handmade batik designs are created through the art of layering and mixing of colors injected with creativity. Batik can be done in four different ways. Hand-drawn, dinidesign nila gamit ang kanilang mga kamay, using metal blocks, yung block printing, screen printing, and digital printing.
that's all. Thank you and God bless. Hope you learned something today.